Welcome to the shop, Bob. Welcome, to, Welcome the shop. to the shop. The shop is not like a normal situation interview. You're going to do a lot of them as a rookie in Orlando, a lot of bullshit interviews, honestly. Yes. yes. This ain't that. No. You guys are all athletes. You guys are all famous, great at your sport, but still stay true to who you are. Like, how do you do it's that? It's funny, because I was talking to somebody the other day, and they were saying how athletes are so interesting because they can be one way in their field of sport, and then off the court, they can be a exactly. totally Exactly. That's, that's, that's the truth. And it's like an art, and we don't even know it. Like, we skilled at, at doing that. So what are you on the court versus off? Well, you sing, by the way. We want to hear you sing. Before the show Before is Before the show. Maybe soon. Y'all ever heard Big Sing? <laughs> you no, heard Big Sing? No. Oh, you good. Gotta, Let us have a little first something. First timer. Give us something. Let him clear his throat. <laughs> You're my baby, my lover, my lady, I feel. Like you hey. were made just for me, babe. Tell me if you feel the same way. That boy can sing. That boy can sing. That boy can sing. That boy can sing. That boy tell me. Glad I locked my woman down. <laughs> boy, bring him around Vic. She be gone. Go. He took that throat. He had that. Give me. Yeah. He was ready. My thing is, how do you balance all of this? Like, your outside interest with, you know, and taking care of what you got to do on the floor? Because you do it the best. <laughs> <laughs> um, I think it comes with, it's going to come with growth, Mo. I think um, it's nothing that, that I can tell you right now that be able to set you up right now for this moment that you're about to go through in your first year. This is going to be the best time of your life because it's something we've worked our whole life, not only just playing, but thinking it, dreaming about it, wanting it, seeing it. 100%. Like, you've seen it your whole life, and you said, if I could be a part of that, like, if I could be a part of that, and when you walk across that stage and you shake the commission hand, you okay. like, man. But then you got that part, and now you got the, okay, now I got to start over. From the bottom. You got to start over. Ben, the, ben you just went through it. Was it that great, like LeBron saying, was it really that great? Like, from where I am now to a year ago, I would have thought I knew so much more a year ago. And now looking back, I really didn't know anything. You didn't which know is shit. Like you thought, nothing. You I'm thought like, you knew everything? I'm thinking, I'm like, I know what's going on. Y'all know how to handle my business. And now, like, a whole year and a whole season where I played, way more. The one thing Bron told me was, you know, I'm not going to be the player I want to be right now this season. You know, I might not be coming out hitting threes and stuff, but keep chipping away, and now I'm going to get to that point eventually if I keep working towards well, it. What was, like, one thing you thought, you know, I fucking know this on the court. Like, I got this. And you realize, on like, court, oh, shit, I don't know that at just all. Just, like, watching highlights and stuff like that, I'm thinking I'm doing so well. Watching your own highlights. And, and I'm, <laughs> I'm watching my plate. I'm like, why did, why did I do this? Like, what am I doing? Like, I'm making mistakes, like, certain things that at the time, I'm thinking, like, it's not a big thing. But now I look at it, I'm like, there's so much growth that I have you know, that I need to get better at. It's just going to take time. It's not going to happen overnight. So you obviously had to deal with some criticism. Your jump shots, you got to get yeah. better. You gotta, and a lot of people are telling you, you got to do this, he right. should be doing this. Did it affect you different from the beginning to the end of the season? Definitely, because I know what I'm capable of. And e even without, like, the jumper and hitting threes or whatever the case is, like, I'm still the same player. But mm. I don't need to worry about what people are saying on the Internet. Like, who are they? Nope. Some, some trolls or whatever it Nothing. is. But, yeah. but, but, but honestly, for me... My path was a little different. When I came in as a rookie, those three years, we never won, ever. We were never a part of a winning franchise. So I got traded, I went to OKC. But it was always the criticism of Russ had no help. Mm -hmm. and did, and that, did that affect it, you? What? To the point where I remember I used to play in games and look at the sidelines at the reporters like, damn, did he just talk about me for turning the ball on? Damn, during, during the, the games. games. Damn. 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 During the games. You going through that feeling at the game. During the games. During the games. It's was, hard to play your best when you like that. Man, I'm telling you. So I got traded twice in a year. And both times I was on a plane, no warning. Nobody told me I was getting traded. How did you find out you got traded from OKC? When I landed. Oh, Don't land tell me over Twitter. I'm, 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 I'm a thunder on the plane. You, when I land, I'm on 
at that point, you start questioning what kind of person you are, what kind of, even what kind of basketball player you are. Like, Can I dang, I thought they was rocking with me. Like, I thought they was for me. And, and they, you know, people say don't take it personal. It's hard not to be human beings, right? Of course. So at that point, I realized that I had to work on my mind as much as my body. Mm -hmm. You feed your body, you feed your mind. I think that's well. something that, like, really goes unnoticed in the sports world. It's like... How do you deal with all the naysayers and all that? That's like fine. Okay, I don't go on Twitter for a little. I ignore the trolls. But it's like, what's going on in here? That's huge. That's like, huge. Because there's nobody who talks to you in a day more than yourself. Oh Think about that goodness. little voice in your head that's no, like, oh, 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 oh. It's like, the whole fucking shut up. <laughs> right? That oh, voice. Like, it's, you can't quiet it sometimes. But I. Two years ago, I got a sports psychologist, too. It's yep. been the greatest thing, the meditation. Greatest. Oh, man. And it just kind of quiets that What's changed? That it's quiet the voice. What changed? Is I can quiet, quiet the voice, the voice um, focus on the process, and not, you know, thinking about the past or predicting the future. Like, what's that going to do? Nothing. <laughs> exactly. But that's what that voice leads you to all the time. And it's like, all right, let's get back to the process and what I can control now. Yeah. Mo is looking around like, Maybe this NBA yeah, thing ain't for me. This basketball shit is driving me crazy. He like, wait, 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 you do what? For, for me, it's a little different because my, my biggest criticism this early on in my career is who I am off the floor. So it's hard for me to Really? Turn like, what is it? Like, what? I was told in the pre-draft, my biggest criticism was that I had too many eclectic interests. What and I'm like, mean? yeah. What? Th this is on record. Somebody said that I had too many eclectic interests. So that's why I asked you, like, how do you balance all of this? The teams thought you might not focus on basketball enough. Like, you didn't take yeah, it seriously. Yeah. So, and then That's what they all want to know. Into, like, are you going to yeah. take it serious enough? No, it turned into, do you love the game? Right, I'm, do you I'm love looking, the game? Do you love the game? And I'm looking around like, so you criticizing me if I love the game because I'm, it turned into because I'm smart. Because I don't, yeah, sound, say because I don't sound like the typical athlete. And then one thing that drives me crazy is when people tell me that I sound good for an athlete. No, no, no. I tell people all the time. I'm, oh. a, I'm not a basketball player. I'm a business person. I tell people who are real... Heavyweight business people, they'll come up to me and go, wow, you're really articulate. I'll go, what does that what mean? What the fuck did you want me to sound exactly, like? Exactly, <laughs> exactly. Like, what, is, what, does, what does that, that mean? mean? What does that really mean? What are you saying? You might as well just add the next part, for a black man. Exactly. <laughs> just put that just on the end it. of it, just and I'll feel better. Just say it. And they'll be like, oh, no, no, I'm not racist. I'm like, no, I'm not calling you racist. You should know that that's a fucked up thing to yeah. say to somebody. Yeah. You know what yeah. I mean? It but is. what do you think they wanted you to be? Like, because they're saying you're too aggressive. Well, there's two, there's two persons that they want me to be. The first thing is, like, you look African. You're seven foot, you're African, you have long arms. So, do you too, speak bro. English? Like, and I'm just like, I'm just, so I, mess, I, I mess with people. I get, I get that no, too. what I do is I mess I with people. Too. I, mess, I mess with people. I mess with people. I'll be like, where's your accent? So you sometimes know? people come up to me and be like, no English. <laughs> and, they, and they believe it. I'm like, damn, that was that. It was really that easy. By the way, I wish I could do that I shit. That's good. How about that? I wish I could do it. I wish somebody came up to me like, LeBron would be like, no, no English. English. Yeah. <laughs> I give him a middle finger. I wish I could Yo, do that shit. That'd be crazy. And then the second persona is, all right, this is a kid from Harlem. Let's see what he sounds like. And then when I talk, they be like, you don't sound like you're from Harlem. I'd be like, well, what's that supposed what's to that mean, supposed bro? To mean, like, right? what is that supposed to mean? What does a kid from Harlem sound like? All right. And, you know, it's, it's just hard because, like, you can't just turn, you can't just turn that off. You can't just turn off that, that, that. And don't turn it off. Listen, exactly. at the end of the day, Mo, I'd rather fail being who I, who I am mm. than fail being somebody that they want me to be. Won't tell it. That remind me of what Serena said. She'd rather yeah. lose than cheat to win. Yeah, yeah. she's I'm not a win. cheater. So. Yeah, I'm not a cheater. She'd rather lose than cheat to win. That's exactly, that's exactly what she said. It. What did we think all watching that Serena thing? First of all, I didn't know the rule until we talked about it the other day. I didn't know that rule. Wait, wait, you guys don't know the rule? Do y'all know the rule? The I did not know rule? that rule either. I had no I idea. Know either. In tennis, period. There's no coaching. There's no coaching. If you look at your coach and your coach telling you to... Yeah. yeah. Or, or yeah. like, none of that. Mm. So the coach said he did it. He admitted to it. Serena said she didn't see it. He needed to not insert himself on that match. Like the coach? No, the ump. The, the the um. yeah. Like you're doing way too much, sir. And she you said, "There's been men that have said terrible yeah. things out here, and I lost an entire game for that." And she's right. She's fighting battles that she shouldn't have to fight. Like she's the greatest. It, it just looked weird because this guy is sitting so high on a pedestal. Yeah. Why the mm -hmm. hell is his? Seat so goddamn high. <laughs> <laughs> could you imagine? Could you imagine the referees on stilts during the game? <laughs> <laughs> they already, they already go crazy on us for saying anything. But could you imagine if they was on the court on with the stilts, stilts, the refs make a call and they're like, "This is like travel. Get your ass down the court." <laughs> <laughs> like man, kick the motherfuckers. <laughs> right. So I can, I, I feel that. Yeah. I feel that. It's Even weird. like us trying to fight to get 
paid more. Yes, like of when men hold out to get paid, it's like, damn right, get paid. You get paid. You deserve that. When we're doing it, it's like, you should be in the kitchen making sandwiches. Why the F are you asking for more money? It's like ridiculous the things that come our way and what we hear. But I mean, we have to fight these battles. So hopefully, you know, your daughter won't have to. And she'll yeah. just come up in the W. Well, and I appreciate it. I'm it. Yeah. with y'all though. Would you look who pulled up? <laughs> it wasn't time. my fault. There was traffic from Boston, man. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> the American version of the shop and the Canadian version. You grew oh, up with yeah. a white Jewish mom. What was yeah. your first experience? Did you, was it in Memphis and you fit, realized what the shop was really like? Crazy enough, my mom was always like, you know, having... Uh, like having a mixed race child at that time, I was scared to bring you to a black barbershop because my mom had like, you know, a couple tough experiences where she just, she just kind of felt um, of like disrespected or alienated in, in that situation. So my mom really like let me just have the worst lineup for <laughs> a long time. If you look at early Degrassi, like I have the round lineup going into the ice pick. <laughs> <laughs> LeBron went through a crazy experience. Yeah, man, I got a perm and I didn't know no. it. So me and my mom had a little beef about my hair. She got tired of me never picking my hair. She used to always say, What's too nappy? Pick that motherfucking hair or I'm gonna cut it off. I'm like, Ma, chill out. You're not cutting my hair. Like, I love my hair. You better pick that motherfucking hair or I'm cutting it off. Or you better put something in it, right? So. <laughs> So growing up in the black community, there's this thing called pink moisturizer, right? Oh, the pink gel. It's, a pink, the... it's like a pink little bottle. Yeah. It's supposed to soften your shit up, right? <laughs> so my mom sends me to the local barbershop, right? She like, son, the barber there, he gonna put a little softener in your hair, soften you up, right? So my mom hit me with the setup. <laughs> I'm I'm halfway, halfway through the session, I'm sitting down. So I'm sitting down, they got me like this. I'm 13, I'm like, God. Damn, my shit burned. <laughs> and I ain't never, I don't know what the fuck. I'm like, I'm like, yo, I tell him, I'm like, yo, I mean, we need to watch my shit burn. He like, leave it in for a couple more minutes. I'm like, all right, cool. I'm like, yeah, we'll make it a little softer. He like, yeah, it's gonna make it a little softer. I'm like, all right, cool. Five minutes later, wash my shit out. I was able to do like this to my afro. <laughs> And, and, it all laid down. and it all laid down. And them oh. niggas saw my hair. They was like, oh, no. oh shit. <laughs> oh, shit. They was like, nigga, we about like, to slide down your head, man. <laughs> they was like, I can't believe you showed up like that. I had, to, I had to start from scratch. This is the only way it's supposed to be right here, us sitting right here. It's been a long time coming. The definition of great is not doing something great. No. Because there have been people who are not great MCs put out a great album or make a great verse. I think the definition of great is getting there and just staying. And staying. And how long? That yeah. is, to me, the definition of great. Yeah, but it also comes with its, its ups and downs, right? Because to create a great story, there has to be perseverance as well. So There it's needs like, to be some ups and downs. You know, it's like, go, you know, you, you watch somebody coast at... at at um, consistent victory without any challenge, right. then you start questioning how much you really like them. Yeah. Right? Right. I mean, in this, even Cinderella lost her shoe. That's a good point. I mean, come on, That's man. a bar. <laughs> That's a, that might end up Yo, Bron has down. bars. <laughs> I mean, What was your on, challenge, Bron? Was it 11? Was 11, yeah. I mean, I had seven great seasons, eight great seasons. Went to Miami my first year, and... Thought it would be easy, you know what I'm saying? I knew I had to still work hard, but I thought it would be easy because I was teaming up with some guys that was, players. you know, you know some, some real players. And, you know, you go down there and, 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 and that first year we lose that finals. And I was like, I felt like the world had caved in. You know, first of all, I was wearing a hat that I wasn't accustomed to. And I, and I bought into it because I, at that point in time in my life, I was still caring about what other people thought. But that moment right there, that moment shaped me for who I am today. Like, it, that moment, without that moment, I wouldn't be here. So you happy you lost that finals today? Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm not happy that You I, wouldn't want to lose that yeah, finals. I, I'm not happy that I lost. You know, I left that finals like, yo, Brown, what the fuck was you on, man? Like, you was overthinking everything. You didn't show up. You didn't do what you were supposed to do. You know, and, and now you can't even sleep at night because you didn't give it all that you had in the sense of, you know, you could have done better. And 
you know, after that finals, man, I, I was just like, that's never happening again. I may lose again. I may not win everything, but I, I would never, I would never fail in anything. And you feel like that was your greatest failure in your career? No, nah, that was my greatest achievement. The greatest achievement. If you're really good, yeah. your greatest failure is the beginning it's of the, the greatest beginning thing of, like. Yeah. like when you fail miserably, that's actually the beginning of something great. Mm -hmm. Your greatest failure is, so you felt like that was the beginning mm -hmm. of something great. That was my greatest achievement. Yeah. To overcome it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's, that's fucking... That's crazy. That's yeah. incredible. That's, yeah. That might be another bar. Yo, Drake, on the new yeah. album, by the way, mm -hmm. we all fucking love it. My dad's favorite song, March 14th. Wow. You haven't met my dad yet, but my dad is a lot like Dennis G. Okay. Born with a hole in his heart, never worked a job in his life, but right. a fucking hustler, figure yeah, yeah, shit yeah. out. So, like, I learned a lot from my father. I think Bron did, too. Did you learn a lot from Dennis, right or wrong? Oh, of course. Um, I mean, you know, he's taught me a lot, like you said, right or wrong. Um, I learned a lot about... Uh, I learned a lot about being a man from him, and I learned a lot about the man that I want to be through him. Of course, of course. You know, so. And, Brian, you talked about that, like, your dad not being yeah. around made you stronger. Like, I got to yeah. be a father. That you know, the kid. crazy thing is because, you know, my whole life I grew up resenting my father. Everything was like, fuck pops. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom. He left me. Yeah, he left me. Why would he do that to my mom? My mom's 16 years old. She's a sophomore in high school when she had me. And I was like, if I ever met him, we, we going to blows right off top. And as I got older and as I became more of an adult, you know, um, I started to realize and started to think to myself, like, damn, I, what, what, what was he going through? I, I don't know what he was going through at the time. Because you, you started know, going through shit as an adult? Yeah, I started going through shit as an adult. Like, damn, was it really, was, was it things that he couldn't control? And then I started thinking, like, when I had my family and I was raising my kids the way I raised my kids, I was like, he's the reason why I am the father who I am today because... I always wanted to be there. I always wanted to set an example and have the father figure in their lives so they never had that yeah. resentment. I was really hard on my, my, my parents for, uh, for giving me sort of a, a childhood that I had to wrap my mind around, you know, yeah. as I grew. I, you know, multiple times sort of suggested that they could have done a better job of uh, whatever it was, yeah, co-parenting, sticking together, you know, not being so uh, divided, and and of course, you know, as as life takes shape and teaches you your own lessons, um, I end up in this situation um, where I, you know, where I don't have the fairy tale like, oh, Drake started a family with Rihanna, and like this is like so <laughs> perfect. Or like, you know, great, Drake, yeah. yeah, it's like, it looks so good on paper. I like wanted this. that, too. Uh, well, I mean, and I course. didn't get it, too. By the way, I wanted that, too. Uh, I wanted that, too. He, he got it. When but, I had a kid, that was one of the things I, I was worried about telling my mom. Was that a hard thing to tell your parents? Um, Were you, like, a little embarrassed? Because I'll be honest with you, when I did it with my mom, I was a little, because I didn't want that for me. I think I was more scared to tell my mom, because my mom has had real belief and real relationships with women in my life. Um, like over the course of my years mm -hmm. that I'm sure she would um, expect or be uh, elated if I were to have gotten one of those <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> women pregnant. One of those she knew. Yeah. Right, right, right. Exactly. So it was tough for me to tell her that it's somebody that she's never met. I am a single father learning to communicate with uh, a woman who, you know, we've had our, we've had our moments, right? I mean... Um, and I do want to be able to explain to my son what happened. Um, but I don't have any desire for him to, like, not love his mother. Or I don't want, like, right, I don't right, ever right. want the world to be angry at his mother. Like, we found ourselves in a situation and we are both equally responsible. And, and now, like, I'm just really excited to be a great father. Um, I have a son. He's a beautiful boy. I gotta show you guys. You, you haven't shown us yet, but by the way, the other day with you, I was gonna ask you, and I was like, yeah. <laughs> "That's awesome, yo, oh, right? Geez. Yeah, crazy blue How eyes, is he, yeah, yo. crazy blue eyes, baby blue eyes." You know, he's already in the pool, like, shooting a basketball. You know what I'm saying? I'm, like, I'm really, I'm telling you, he's going to get to a certain age. I'm like, I'm going to bring him right to Bronny's house. house? So I'm going to be fine. like, yo, summer camp at Bronny's house. That's fine. See you later. <laughs> I got him. I got him for but, sure. But, but no, nah, I'm, 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 just, I'm just excited to, um, 
again, you know, all the things that I've learned uh, from and through my father and the incredible things that right. I've learned from my mother uh, about patience, uh, about love, unconditional love. No matter what happens, you know, I have unconditional love for the mother of my child because I want him to love his mother and I have to project that energy. Of course. Um, yeah, because so, it's a blessing. I mean, yeah, no matter but, what the But I didn't come from that. Right. You didn't I come from, from my right. mother being like, nah, the, your right. dad is this. And, right, and, and right. you know, and my, but you know, one thing my dad was, my dad would never speak um, ill of my mother ever, ever, ever. And my mother is the nicest, kindest, sweetest woman. But she's a woman scorned and, and, and a woman who, you know, is exhausted. Yeah. I think I asked my mom one time. I think I asked my mom. I, I think I asked my mom one time. Mom. Where's dad? Or who? when you were a kid, or as when I was a kid? When I was a kid. Have you guys spoke about it as adults? No, no, no. She shut that shit down early. If you even go, who's for dad? It. Where's dad? It's me, nigga. <laughs> nigga, don't, don't worry about it. I got it's this. me and you. It's me and you. But let me ask you, we're Drake, gonna figure this out. Bron, he said his biggest challenge was 2011 with the finals. What's been your biggest challenge? Obviously, this summer, Kanye tweeted he was in the studio with you. He's cool with Pusha. Like, what was your, was that a, did you take that as a big challenge? It was, uh, your yeah, challenge is a, is, a, is a good word for it, I guess. I mean, I ended up linking with, with Ye, and he, you know, sold me on this whole, um, speech of like, you know, I, I'm, I'm in a great place. I'm making money and I'm a father and I want to, you know, be Quincy Jones and help you. But in order to do that, um, you've got to be, uh, transparent with me and you gotta play me your music and you've gotta oh, tell me shit. when you're dropping and I know you don't like to do things like that. And so, you know, I was in the studio. I guess, you know, we all kind of felt a genuine vibe from it. So I played him my music and I told him when How I was dropping. How much of Scorpion did you have done by then? Maybe like 60% or something. Got it. And then, um, and then from there it was all good, you know, uh, he played me, uh, like this. He played you a beat, right? He played me Lift Yourself and he was like, yo, you can have this if you want. Um, and I was hype. I started writing to it and then he was like, yo, you got to come to Wyoming. So Wyoming happened and 40 went to Wyoming early and he was like, man, I'm here a day early, man. Something's off. He's you like, felt 40 it? said that. Yeah. He's like, this wow. guy's working on an album, man. And I was like, for real? He just he told me, announced it yet. He just told me he wanted to work on, like, he just told me he wanted to give me beats. And he's not, he said he wasn't dropping till like October, November or something like that. And I'm like, it's all good. Let's just go and let's see what it's about. So I went and, you know, ended up pretty much spending majority of my time working on his music, like just trying to like <laughs> <laughs> cook up ideas for him, you know? Right, raps um, for him, in other words, yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, whatever. Just, 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 just trying to lend a helping hand, you know, cook, cook up. Listen, I, I don't, I don't knock anybody. Music is a creative experience uh, that should be shared. But anyway, I was out there and I spent all my time pretty much working on his stuff. And again, I left Wyoming and I was like, okay, well, we left with, we left with lift yourself and like a pat on the back, you know? So I was like, all right. It's all good. Well, well, I guess, yeah, sure. I'll, I'll try and make the most of this and hopefully he sends some other things through. By the way, I'm in Wyoming. I play on March 14th. I send him a picture of my son. Oh my God. I tell him I'm having trouble with my son's mother. We had a conversation. I shared my, mm, 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 so mm. I wake up. And all these dates are out one by one by one, all around June 15th, by the way. First. One's May 31st, one's June, whatever. First, they second, say, yeah, June, yeah, this, June. Yeah. Then the next two days, whatever, I wake up now to this text from him, like passive, like sends me as something I did. Yo, I love you, brother. Lift yourself comes out with him just talking nonsense. I'm like, oh, this. this Scooby poop, poop that round, bro. Oh, this guy's trolling. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> This guy's trolling me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. he's trolling. Oh, this was like a manipulative, like, I want to break you thing. So I said, all right, I'm going to go back to distancing myself again. I know what this is. And then the first album drops. And of course, there's a this song towards me oh, that gosh. you produced that's talking about writing. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. I was, and I'm writing for you. I was just there with you as friends helping you and now you're dissing me so i'm like man this is dark this is evil you know shit. this is dark it made me realize and actually i text braun after you guys it took, spoke it about it, it. Well, it, it took me four it. days to really register what had happened 
And I text Braun. I said, I hope I don't let you down with my decision. And that was something I was really concerned about. With your decision I, to do what, Drake? To not do anything. To not do anything. To not, to to not, not respond. That's what you were worried about when you called me. Like, I'm not responding to that song. Is do you? You were just like, I don't know how people feel about well, that. Well, I was more concerned about, like, you know, the people who, whose who opinions I respect with. and the people who we thrive off competitive nature. Of course. But there was, you know, people love to say, like, rap purists and people who just love conversation. They love to say, hey, man, there's no rules in this shit, but there are fucking rules in this shit. Of course. Exactly. And I'm going to tell you something. It's like, I knew something was going to come up about my kid. They had to add, like, the deadbeat thing to make it more appealing, which is fine. And I, I understand that. And I, even that, I was like, okay, the mom and dad thing... Whatever, you don't even know my family. Yeah. It's like some, but I'm gonna tell you, wishing death on my friend that has MS. I study rap battles for a living. Now, when you mention defenseless people who are sick in a hospital that passed away, that really sent me to a place where, you know, I just believed then and believe now that there's just a price that you have to pay for that. It just, it's over, you're gonna get Someone's gonna fucking punch you in the fucking face. The, the, the shit's done, the event's over. I wanted to do other things. I didn't, want to, I didn't want to further your reputation or your career by rapping back at you and having this exchange. And, and that was it for me. And Drake takes you and like, am I, am I letting you down? Yeah, what did I tell you? What did you say to him? You said, you, you said that, that I, I can never let, like, let you down. I said, listen, as a hip hop historian, who loves hip hop? I would love for you to respond. Of course, mm -hmm. we want to hear. We're I did, for it. by the way. I, you're the, again. You're the by, by, by the way, I did. Yeah. By the way, yeah. yeah. You, you wrote know, the song. I did, yeah. and I said terrible things. Yeah, I said. And I, got I want home. you to every time respond. Every time I said self. I said selfishly in all caps. Yeah, yeah. you're selfish. Yeah. I said because you want to hear it. I want you to know one thing. You can. We, we're family. You're a brother of mine. You could never ever let me down ever. And I left it at that. Mm -hmm. Left it right at that. And you wrote the song and never put it out. Yeah, because I got home and and I just listened back to it and I was like, man, this is not this is not something I ever want to be remembered for. This is not even a place that I necessarily want to go. And to all the people who enjoy that, I tip my hat to you. By the way, hell of a chess move. The song I thought it was trash, but the chess move was smart. was was genius. Back against the wall, I either go all the way filthy or I fall back and I have this sort of chink in my armor for the rest of, of, of time to a rap to purist, a rap which purist. is fine, I can live with that. You know, I would much rather live with that than the things that I was about to, the research I did, the you things that I was yeah, gonna you... say and the places that I was gonna go, not only for him, but the other guy too. You know, and now I just, I feel pure, I'm good. You feel good. You know, yeah, and, I, and, I, and you know what I did? I took that energy, just like you said, I took that energy and I put it into me, not you. You don't get that. You told me. me you didn't have certain songs on Scorpion until that. I didn't have I didn't have in my feelings. I didn't have nonstop. I didn't have hey, what's, I didn't what's, have what, what's one of our favorite songs, Mavi now? Sick of these niggas. Oh my oh, yeah. god. I didn't have mob ties. Oh, I'm sick I'm of these niggas. I'll hire some help. Yeah. Get rid of you, niggas. Let's do it. It's a wrap, baby. Right. Yes, sir. Oh. Thank you, guys. Yes, Thank sir. you, Survive. We'll catch that bird. Yes, sir. Listen, I'm at a point in my life with hair that I can't fuck around. <laughs> <laughs> One bad cut, bitch, it's to the ball. <laughs> Yeah, one one bad, bad cut is to the body. I ain't got no more fuck around cuts. <laughs> <laughs> Just yeah. to the MJ. Oh I, got, I got no more fuck around time.